We are back with some more Dynasty Buy or Sell content here. And today we have Christian Watson. Before we get into it, make sure you drop a like and a comment. Let us know if you are buying or selling Christian Watson. Finished wide receiver 41 this past year. Mm -hmm. Over 600 yards, seven touchdowns, missed three games, and he's been, he had an up-and-down season. Up-and-down yeah. season. He was... He wasn't mixing it up with Aaron Rodgers, and then the second half, he would be, somehow became a league winner. Wide receiver yeah. for some of you guys. Zach, are you buying or selling Christian Watson? Yes. So I am buying Christian Watson. I'm buying. And I know one person in particular is going to be very happy that I'm saying that. <laughs> one of our... Uh, one of our audience members is a very big Watson fan, but mm -hmm. I mean, okay, let's start at the top. Let's remember the brilliance of that second half. Okay. From weeks one to nine. Yes. It was a little bit of a mess. He was dealing with injuries, mm -hmm. wasn't playing a very high percentage of snaps, but Watson was fantastic from week 10 on week 10 onwards. If not elite, I'm not saying elite, but almost above, above average, above, like we've talked about before. Average. Right. <laughs> So let's look at Christian Watson's season from weeks one to nine and compare it from weeks 10 to eight. Targets per game, more than double. 6.5 is what he ended up with uh, in the second half. Yards per game, absolutely skyrocket. Receiving touchdowns, he was 100 plus, right, is where he ranked. Mm -hmm. But in the second half, he was tied for first in receiving touchdowns with, I believe, Devontae Adams it was. The first half, he was a wide receiver 107. Then from weeks 10 to 18, he was a wide receiver eight points per game. He was even better. He was a wide receiver eight. I said nine earlier or eight earlier, but it's supposed to be nine, but eight. Mm -hmm. And then that snap percentage goes up drastically. Yes. Watson's end of the season reminds me a lot of a rookie season back in 2019. And I'm curious if anyone can comment down below and guess who this rookie is. This rookie player a in 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. Weeks 1 to 11, he averaged 8.9 points per game and was a wide receiver 55. So a little bit better than Watson. But in weeks 12 to 17, he averaged 21.3 points per game and was a wide receiver 2 in fantasy football. So he almost went like even more drastic than Christian Watson yeah, he did. Went, he went crazy. Any guesses to who that player is? Uh, you might see it on the notes. I don't know if you do. <laughs> um, I do, so I don't want to say. Okay, so you guys comment down below. But that player... <laughs> is A.J. Brown. Yes, that is A.J. Brown's rookie season with the Tennessee Titans, eerily similar to Christian Watson's. Well, I thought, why don't we look at some comparable seasons since 2016 for Christian Watson, right? Right. These aren't perfect, but statistically, you know, these aren't the same players height-wise, play style, right, what they can do for an offense. But statistically, I wanted to look at some similar seasons since 2016. Well, think about Tyreek Hill as a rookie. Right, 61 receptions, under 600 receiving yards, nine total touchdowns. Very similar to Watson. Keelan Cole, right? So you got the highs, you got the lows. DJ Moore in 2018 had a similar season. Not as many touchdowns, but he was certainly getting some opportunity. We talked about A.J. Brown. In 2020, T. Higgins had a similar season. A lot more targets, but a similar statistical season. Keeping in mind that Watson missed more games than these players. And then... Amon Ross St. Brown in 2021 had a similar season as well. Again, more targets, played more games. So that makes sense, right? But I think we, and I think I, I'm even someone who did this. I think we undervalued how impressive Christian Watson was at the combine. Truly. Yeah. This is a freak <laughs> prospect, okay? I think I was subject to it. A lot of other people were. We massively undervalued Christian Watson and what he did at the combine. And yeah. I want to make sure I don't do that again. Check this out. Since the year 2000, Badaki, since the year 2000, Jeez. only three wide receivers have met the following criteria in the NFL. Okay. At minimum being six foot four, and they ran a four, three, six or faster 40 yard dash. Calvin Johnson in 2007, DK nice. Metcalf, in 2019 Another big name. and Christian Watson in 2022. You guys let me know if I'm missing someone because I tried my absolute best to do the most accurate research for you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be happy to say I'm wrong if I was, but from the wide receiver position, those are the only three that I could find since the year 2000. This is a freak athlete and he has proven to be a successful NFL wide receiver. I think it's going to translate. Another person I wanted to put in there was Julio Jones, but I think he's actually 6'3". I don't think he's 6'4". 
uh, and he didn't actually run as fast as those other guys. But, um, but I think that we, again, again, I'm also a part of that. I just think we undervalued what his, what his rookie season actually, actually meant. Right. At this point, we shouldn't really be questioning, like, does Christian Watson have it in the NFL? Can he be that guy? Can he be it for a team? Right. I think your only concerns are around quarterback play. So let's talk about it. The quarterbacks is Aaron Rodgers moving on. Is Jordan Love staying? I'm mm-hmm. not sure, but I have enough confidence in both of those quarterbacks to still say yes at this price point I'm buying. If we had Aaron Rodgers here and he was five years younger, no one no That's one would be selling yeah. Christian Watson. No, no one, no. no one at all would be doing that. I believe in Green Bay enough as an organization of decades and decades of, of being able to find and, and fine-tune quarterback prospects. I think Jordan Love could be that next person. So the ceiling for the next two to three years is DK Metcalf or higher, right? The floor is obviously very low, but yes, I am buying Christian Watson. And if you want to know what I'm buying him for, I'll send Michael Pittman away for him. Debo Samuel, Devonte Adams. I can get more. If I can send Adams and get more with Watson in return, the same can be said for Cooper cup. I can send Cooper cup away and get more with Watson in return. I'll send Ramondre Stevenson, Nick Chubb, Chris Godwin, Brandon Ayuk, DJ Moore. All those are players that you could consider starting conversations with. And then if you look at pit compensation right now, apparently according to the community, you can send the 110 to the 112 around that area and get him, which I would do in a heartbeat because I don't think the wide receivers that we like will be available there. So yeah, I'm a big buy and, and uh, I'm going to remain a big buy. I think even if they bring in a compliment wide receiver, which they need, they need that. Yeah. Yeah. And look, you hit the nail on the head with a lot of, points of of his stats so before, as i get into my take i am buying christian watson but i guess i wanted to play a little bit of a devil's advocate but i am buying i'm actively selling as well to see what i can get is there a way for me to tear up right and i can kind of get into that a little bit later but once again you kind of hit the nail on the head all statistically so i want to question the community is like how much do you believe and like zach kind of alluded to earlier how much do you believe in, in jordan love how much are you how much trust do you are you gonna instill in him to have someone like a Christian Watson who was probably your wide receiver one or wide receiver two on your team, and you're saying okay, you know what, I'm just gonna ride with Christian Watson. What if there's bumps in the road? You know, I think there's there gonna be bumps in the road regardless with any quarterback who's gonna come in and be Christian Watson's guy. But are you confident in that? You know, and what one thing that I really like about Christian Watson as well is the adversity that he went through. Right, he went through a lot of adversity of like okay. I I struggled early part of the season with dropping a lot of balls. Aaron Rodgers essentially calling everyone out, not just not just, you know, Christian Watson. It was Romeo Dubs. It was everyone. Right. He was like, these people need to start catching some balls. If not, we're going to continue to lose some games. Then he went through the injury adversity and then he went then he kind of took that skyrocket. So he's been through some stuff. And I know it's kind of like, oh, it's only one year. It's probably not that big of adversity that everyone goes to it. But I mean. For someone like this, I think it's pretty big, especially with the limelight of Aaron Rodgers and how much he he has say in what these people can do and how much you're on the field. So I think that's pretty big. So, yeah, let's go back to the quarterback play. Are you really sure that you want to invest in Christian Watson in a quarterback change? And I'm a believer in Jordan Love. We're both believers. We have we, we've said that publicly. You know, are you are you OK saying, OK, hey, you know what? I'm going to be in buying Christian Watson. I'm going to be investing in Christian Watson with Jordan Love, who hasn't barely played a snap. He's played a game or two. He's played max, I think, three games in total. Right. Not including preseason. So are you comfortable doing that? Can he also can can he also make a wide receiver a top 20, top even 25 guy i think it's possible but the, is that upside there we haven't seen that with christian watson and aaron Rodgers. that's purely because of the injury and everything that was happening and my second point would be is like zach said they can bring a complimentary wide receiver but what if that's a an alpha wide receiver what if that's a deandre hopkins what if that is a quinton what if that's a jsn what if that is any of those guys that comes in are you still confident in that are you still confident in quinton Quinton, are you still confident in Christian Watson still keeping that role, still being that guy, or do you see him more as a, an elite wide receiver too? Once again, these are just questions I want to ask the community, and I want you to really think about, and that's why I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate and say, hey, I like Christian Watson, I believe in the talent, but can I tear up in a way? Can I pivot? 
to a guy that's a little bit more, in my opinion, solidified in his role and what he has done in the past. So once again, Zach hit a lot of points in that, in the statistical part, which is great for, for the price for me, if I am buying, if I'm trying to get Christian Watson, I'm happy to send like similar to what Zach said, Chris Godwin, Traylon Burks, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, DJ Moore. But if I am selling Christian Watson and he's his current value in the 2023 first round pick, that's a 109. That's a Jordan Addison. That's a Chris, potentially a Quentin Johnson. It all depends on how you value those guys and see those guys. I don't, I personally wouldn't do that, but would you do that? Right now, for player swap that I would personally pivot and I believe are going to have a better career or probably is in a better situation, or I believe that their ceiling is significantly higher than a Christian Watson, and this could be in a package, I'm happy to pivot to a Jerry Judy, a Jameson Williams, a Devonta Smith, a Drake London. I think I'm on the edge here with Michael Pittman, but I would say Michael Pittman can be in that conversation. So once again, just questions for the community and saying, how much do you trust Jordan Love? How much do you trust Aaron Rod? I mean, I think if Aaron Rodgers, like Zach said, if Aaron Rodgers is here, you know, 25 years old, a couple years younger, whatever the case may be, we're not questioning it. But I know everyone is questioning Jordan Love. So that's kind of where I wanted to bring in in this thought process. But I love Christian Watson. I'm actively, I am buying, but I'm also actively selling to see if I can pivot to a better situation. Okay. Okay. Well, we would disagree on some of that, but I can respect where you're coming from. <laughs> no, I will say no. from the whole conversation of like, are you worried? Look, Christian Watson is six foot five, six foot four, 210 mm-hmm. pounds. You're not bringing in an alpha that's like, I just don't see the Packers drafting Quentin Johnson. I don't think it makes sense. What if it, um, what if it was a T? What if the Packers? Why would, why, would the, why would the Packers trade for T Higgins though? You, you said they need, they need somebody. T is one of the no, biggest I'd names say right they now. Need a, they could use a compliment for sure. For sure. For they sure. could use a compliment. Um, look, what I was going to say is I think Watson has proven to be a very versatile wide receiver in his rookie season. He played mm-hmm. 31.6% in the slot. He played 67% out wide, uh, was used in the end of rounds a lot. So this is a player to me, if Jordan Addison is drafted the, to this team, fantastic great because the identity yeah. of this team last year yeah. was so run focused because they had no wide receivers that they could trust to open up the passing game watson was the only answer for that and it came in the second half of the season your typical team how they want to win is by throwing the ball at least 30 35 times a game right and the packers just were not able to do that with all rookie wide receivers last year i think you add a compliment i'm not opposed to that i think the offense can change Watson's proven to be very versatile and um, I don't think they want to be a very one dimensional team, which is what they were. I mean, think about it. When you guys watch Packer games last year, you knew they were going to run the ball and the defense knew they were going to run the ball. And if they threw the ball, it was probably to Christian Watson. And that was very difficult for him probably to remain open high contested catch rate. I mean, this is to me, I think, I don't think you can go wrong because this is even a player that's priced as where Drake London is priced, even though he had a similar type year. Right. Yeah. Uh, Drake London obviously had a very high target share. Like I'm, I'm not saying that he had a better season than Drake London. I'm just saying, I think his price tag should be higher than what it is. And I think you're getting that discount because of the questions around quarterback play. So I think, you know, it's good to kind of bring up Drake London because I think there's just as much question marks in Drake London quarterback yeah. play as there is Christian Watson. But so many people are so much more comfortable with Drake London than a Christian yeah. Watson. Because all the of, analytics are are there for Drake London, which I understand. Yeah, yeah. So I think like if you are somebody that does that doesn't believe in Christian Watson, and you're somebody that believes in Drake London, question yourself and say, you know, the analytics are there, and, and they kind of set them apart. But still, like, look what Christian Watson has done to set himself yeah. apart as well. So it's like, you, yeah. Once again, just playing devil's advocate. Not saying I don't like Christian Watson. Just want to keep that clear. I okay. like Christian Watson. I have multiple stocks of him. Uh, just wanted to bring that out there. I mean, what if one more again, just to kind of close it out? What if it's it is? What if they do invest in a Marvin Harris next year? Like that's a that's a big big I, change. We can't worry about two years from now. I know, I know, but I think we can. I think well, the players you reevaluate that we can, next off season. I mean, what, yeah. we can't we can't look two years into the future. I just think that there is a scenario where the Packers haven't invested in a wide receiver in the draft 
as much as we expected them, and we hope that they do, but they have invested in in the well, o- in the off season in free agency. They would have to break a mold of history that they haven't broken for decades. For but sure, it's possible. For it's sure, possible. for sure. So I mean, I think there's definitely an opportunity. I think they. Both. I think people are like, dang, the Packers have never drafted someone in the first round. They haven't drafted someone in the first round, and the Packers are probably looking at people and be like, we spent the second pick in the second round last year on Christian Watson. I, what do yeah, you guys want from us? Yeah, what more do you and he's want? a star. We want you know? him to be in the first. That's what we <laughs> yeah. want. Um, anyway, why don't you guys comment down below? Let us know what you think. You know, are you buying? Are you selling? Tell us why. Like the video to, to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content, and we'll see you in the next one. All up. Yo, what's good? Thanks well, for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos, watch now, it. You can also subscribe right now if you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm-hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.